Welcome back to a new episode of D&D Quick Shots. Today we're going to be talking about moral imperatives. How to make your players react on instinct as part of their human nature. So how do you do that, you ask? Well, stay tuned. One of my favorite beginning episodes of any campaign book that's out there is actually from Horde of the Dragon Queen. Now, I know for the experienced DMs, this is one of those books that may be okay. They may be one, you know, it was the first one released really for 5e, uh, and a lot of people just didn't really like it. Uh, but really, for anybody getting started into D&D, it has a fantastic intro uh, for the very first real scene. So, uh, if you're not familiar with the story, basically what ends up happening is the group of uh, adventurers are heading into a town. Uh, and right whenever they come into town, which is a city called Greenest, the DM is uh, supposed to read this. Now, I'm going to go ahead and read the little excerpt from the uh, book here, uh, give you an idea of what a moral imperative is. It says, without warning, five humans dash out from between two buildings on your left. A limping man and three young children race across the street into more shadows, and a woman carrying a round shield with a broken spear turns and faces back into the direction from which they came. Eight kobolds stream out of the alley on the family's heels and fan out around the woman, who looks determined to delay the creatures for as long as possible. Now that right there says so much. It gives the players an idea of you know, desperation, number one, uh, the broken spear, uh, the players are going to automatically see this. And number one, we have to help. We have to do something. Uh, whether we step in and, and we, we take over, we just support, maybe somebody goes and rushes after the family. There's a lot of different things that can actually happen in that instance, but it generates the requirement to act. And that's what a moral imperative is. There is always going to be something that causes the necessity to do something. Um, one of the worst things that, that you can do is you don't have to start with a sentence of, okay, what do you want to do? You know, right now with that much uh, empathy, at least a little bit, the players are going to want to act. Um, instead of saying, okay, what do you want to do? Or how do you want to do it? Or any of that, it's, you know, how do you want to react? What do you want to do in place of, um, you know, just, just standing there and watching? Uh, I love moral imperatives. I love setting up situations where players have to think and go, ah, man, what are we going to do? You know, but there's obviously a time limit in, in, in a crunch there as well. You know, this woman is being circled. Uh, so it's a really good setup. Uh, it's a really good intro session right there for anybody new to D&D. &D. Um, I don't usually use it for my higher level, uh, you know, newer or uh, more experienced players. The newer players are fine. The more experienced players... Um, I don't usually jump into this uh, campaign itself, but it is a really solid setup for any of the new DMs out there. Um, so let's let's talk about other moral imperatives and how we could actually use those. One of my favorite ones is always, you know, involving children of some kind. Now, not necessarily putting the children uh, into danger, right? You don't have to make everything a, a piece of danger where somebody's going to die and now we have to do something. Uh, it can be as simple as, you know, you see a, a child running down the street um, and you see somebody chasing them uh, and it turns out that's the kid's parents, right? But a child running and somebody chasing them uh, is, is an assumption of danger, right? It feels like there's a problem. Uh, the other side of thing, if you're not going to be using kids, which is totally understandable, uh, you know, set it up in such a way that the players themselves have a moral imperative, right? Um, so you just found out that this big bad evil guy um, is actually, you know, John's father or, or what have you. Um, and now, you know, there is a, is he going to turn on the family? Is he going to turn on us? Or, or how is this going to react? Um, it, it requires action of some kind. Anytime you can force the players to act based on instinct, uh, you're going to have a better session. They're going to have a better memory of it. Uh, whenever you get into those bland scenarios that you don't really know what to do and, um, well, I mean, I guess, but it doesn't really impact anything. Nothing really happens or, uh, you know, any, anything like that. It, it ends up being a boring session. It doesn't make it fun. I always say if, if you're not really sure what to do, 
uh, generate a scenario that is going to cause uh, a moral quandary for people. Um, another fun one that I had seen in the past, uh, there was this monk that was outside, you know, begging for change or what have you uh, for his parish or his church or whatever you want to call it. And, you know, the players get to pass by, choose what they want to do. You know, they give him some money, they skip him, they ignore him, whatever. Um, the next way back, um, you know, they find him dead on the street. Um, they find it, him robbed. You know, all of the change is gone, all of the money is gone. And then on top of it, then, you know, they actually find his head basically spiked to the, uh, to the church door. Um, and then I'll usually, you know, say there's some kind of note or something left behind there. Right, so they had this really nice guy who was doing his thing, and then now all of a sudden his head spiked to the door. They want to do something. There's not going to be a well. Um, that's not our problem. We keep moving. They're gonna they're gonna try and resolve that issue. Um, you know, anytime you can create those situations, people react, and when they react, they usually react in a, in a good way. So um, that's pretty much it for moral uh, imperatives. Let me know if you have any questions. Like and subscribe. Uh, this is the second video up so far, um, and I'm really enjoying it. If you have any questions, any comments you want to put, put them down in the thread, and we'll jump over to those when we get to them. Uh, appreciate your time, and you guys have a great one.